So, with back with another video. This one I'm gonna go over sorts. Um, I've already done the basic work of um, you know applying the core padding, taping everything up, putting the plug in, getting the ends all taken care of and ready to go. That way we don't have to sit around here for a bunch of time. Uh, you want to cut um, a half strip of insulation foam. I like to use these as a blade. And then what I do is I generally just measure you know what I want for a blade. But right there is good. So I want to come over the top a little bit here to, for a, a single edge. So that way the tip will last a little bit longer. I find that if you stop here at the end, oftentimes, It'll, um, so, if, you know, if your padding's like right here, this back end wears out super quick, and these sides tend to wear out faster as well. So, just from hitting this, you know, hitting this direction, this back end just tears apart really fast. So, I like to put some come over the top. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do is I'll set this up to the side. Um, or actually, no, not off to the side. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to gauge... Um, my insulation foam for the inside. This is something that I do with swords. I know some people pull it flat. I don't like that. Uh, I mean, it's preference. You don't have to, but I like to do it this way um, because it creates more of an air pocket so that when you... and it keeps the shape of the sword a lot better so that when you make impact, this is going to help push the foam back out but it also creates this pocket of air in here that when it decompresses, it's letting the air poof out and then push it back out. All right, it's my style. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go like that. Go ahead and put another piece in here. What I do here is I'm just trying to figure out where this inner thing of insulation is going to end. So I just usually mark it with a finger. It makes it pretty quick. I'm gonna pull it off. Get my mark and then just cut. Doesn't have to be perfect pretty. Slide it back in. Oops, sit down. Alright, got that part. And then I can put a little piece right in here for the back blade. So I'll keep that. I'm not too worried about that part. Because um, I'll probably pull it tight onto the foam anyways or onto the core piece. So I cut a bunch of one inch strips. Uh, what I do with these is I use it to secure the foam. You could also use uh, double sided tape. I find that to be a little bit better in the long run. But I want to show some basic stuff here. Plus it's easy to just cut some strips and not have to go buy a separate roll of tape. So I like to tape the seams first so that I know that everything's not going to be slipping around and uh, it helps make sure that those get covered. And then I just uh, go every few inches along here to secure it in place. And the reason I do this is so that when you make impact with the weapon, it doesn't come apart and this slips out the side. You don't want that. That pretty much ruins the weapon makes it look horrendously ugly. So this right here helps secure it on the inside. This is how I've done uh, most of my swords um, throughout all of my weapon making. I've been trying to find alternatives to using this strip of foam on the inside, but haven't had much luck. I found uh, the insulation that goes around windows. That's pretty cool, but I'm still trying to develop something to cut it so that it'll fit better. Because it's round, so it just sits right in there, but I, I don't want to carve across the top of this and then end up nicking the uh, blade padding too much. All right. So from here, what you can do, if you have excess of these, or you know, just kind of fold them with the sticky side facing out, 
or you can use double sided tape. That stuff is really cool. I just didn't want to go and dig through all my stuff right now to, to grab it. I know, selfish. But Paul, the video. Um, I'm pulling here and here. And you know, if you want a couple more. Remember, with the stuff on the inside, you know, you don't have to worry about looking pretty. Whatever is working for the moment is pretty good to go with. Yeah, it's not hurting anything. As long as it'll still be uh, good function-wise. Not such a big deal. So, what I've done is I've put that there so that I can run along. Basically, just take it. And this makes it help makes it a lot easier to uh, you know tape the blade to the core. It gives you a shot to kind of line everything up, make sure it's how you like how you want it, nice and you know, straight. Plus, it frees up both your hands to be able to work on the blade. So that seems pretty good. Um, tape, put it there. I find that with swords, you really do want both of your hands. Um, it's kind of like the spear uh, from the spear video. You know, you want this to be, you know, pull firm, but you don't want it to be like smashed. If you smash it in, you're gonna make your weapon just explode. So you see how that's bending like that? You don't want that. You just want it to kind of kind of get like that on the side. See how the, you got those two lines pulling in towards your thumb? That's what you want to create a weapon with a firm tape instead. And you can see it kind of pulls it in. And we'll, we'll do this enough along the side to where it should pull it straight for the most part. The blade will be straight still. But if you're pulling all the way down tight, all you're doing is, is making your weapon to where it's going to explode when you hit somebody. Somebody, the edge of a shield or something, something that's a little bit harder. It's just going to pop right open. So I'm just eyeballing the tape today. And then I go basically to where they could overlay, just like with the spear. It's a lot of the same design style. And so you can see there's a little bit of that, that bulge there, and that's fine. Because when we get the side tape down and we, and we pull it across, it'll help snug all that together. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do this strip here, and then we'll come back and I'll fold over the top and I'll show you how I tape all that together. Alright, so on to the tip. So with my designs, I kind of cover this with spear. I like to plug to extend out. I like to leave a little empty gap here. I like to fold this over so that your thrust tip is uh, good. Uh, I've been using camp foam, cut uh, coin size. Um, I think this is a penny size circle. Um, and that fits perfectly into half inch. Uh, is, it, is it penny or is it, yeah. Because I think for uh, three quarters it's a nickel. I haven't done a bunch in a while. I've made a whole box full. So, um, so what I'll do is I'll just fold this over as such. Now that I have a good read on where it's going to go, put my tape on, fold it back over. around over 
Remember, snug, firm, but don't crush it down onto the, the core padding. Second piece here, it'll come up off my mat. This one I'll be a little bit more gentle with. So it keeps that shape. I'm actually gonna have to leave it like squared up so it's easier to see for a marshal or whatever if they see it, if they're trying to see a shot where the blade ends. So you have that. And what I do with my tips, I'll pull a, a decent sized piece off here. Fold it in half, sticky side out. Use the back of the blade to kind of create a uh, crease, and then flip it over and cut it. Usually gives me pretty, uh, pretty good squared up cuts. So what I do, just like with the spear, if you've watched the spear one, if you haven't, I'll, I'm going over it again here. And then I like to pull firmly, and then lay it down. And what this does, it kind of gives that you know, like your sword point, you know, everyone wants their point to kind of look like that, right? They don't want it to be just round or like smushed looking. You know, you want a curve to it. Part of a weapon is it looking cool, right? So that's my preference. Maybe you like the smushed look, I don't know. So then I'll do the same thing here. I just come in at like a, you know, two-third angle. I don't know what to call this right now. Um, I am messing this up pretty good. There we go. And firm. Not too tight. So, help shape it. Let's see what we got. There we go. And then, what I'll do, get a decent sized piece here. We'll go across on the tip here. So I don't know how to do this for an angle, but go over the top. I usually do this looking down at it. So Let's see how good I am. And then I'll just run my thumb along here where the padding meets. Pinch these in a little bit. Just run your finger like that. And you pinch it in. Cross the top. And what that does is on the ends here, you know, you'll get a little flare out from the padding because when it's bending, you know, you're condensing all that material. So I do that to kind of push it back in. And then it creates a pocket here to where you can't feel the plug either. And then you got a little air pocket in there too. So when it presses in, you got give. Um, from there, to help reinforce this tip, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run pieces on each side right here. Um, just to add a little extra strength there. Um, one thing I'm not doing in this is what I did with my uh, spear. I just thought about it. I've been trying to get these videos done. So, so I didn't use my um, thinner foam on the inside. Not everyone has access to that anyway, so. In, like that. Don't cut the blade towards yourself. Pull the tape through the blade. So I'll do this, I'll just. Pull that tight on there. And like with the spear, you know, you set down here, you want to keep your thumb on there, you want to pull a little bit, because you want to pull this, this way, kind of, so it pulls the blade back and forth, so when you stab in, if it bends this way, it's got a little bit of tension pulling it back the other way as well, so it doesn't go too far, and just uh, tear open up there. For this part right here, 
what I like to do is take a piece, fold it in half, sticky side out always, touch it right there at the bottom, okay? So you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. So you have it right there. All right. Get both of these parts stuck down good. And then I'll just take this part and go like that. So I'll do it again here. Just kind of take your thumb, fingers, and just slide it on the inside and push it down. That way you're not pulling the padding too far down. It makes a nice little crease to hold it in. And it, you know, fills that in. That's how I do it. So, um, that's what we got so far. I'm not gonna do a cross guard on here. Um, I'm gonna do a separate video detailing different cross guards that you can do. You know, the full hand guard, you can do the, you know, just the T section. Um, show you how to shape stuff for more of a round. Uh, I'll go over a couple different ones that I use. Add one more strip down here. Doing the same thing as I just did at the top. What I like to do here though is a little bit more this way. So I like to kind of lay it on here and then push it into the handle and then just do the same thing as before. Kind of fold it, bring the thumb in, kind of get everything smushed down and shaped how you want it. So now I'm going to go to surface taping and then eventually a pommel. Alright, so I'm putting on the uh, top layer of tape. This is just going to go out as a loner blade for the dastards. I've been making some loner gear for the different factions just to have so people. Uh, more people as they come in will have something to fight with. Same taping technique of it we used with the spear. So take some strips. Go from about the middle of the core and go out. Just use your finger to lightly go over it. This you're gonna be looking for, you know, a better, um, you know, better look from your tape. Uh, so you're not gonna be hiding stuff that's on the top. Those I usually take a little bit more time with. If I have to, I'll pull tape up and readjust it. It's always a little bit tricky. I always try to get it even. It's kind of hard, but and I just finger up along there in the hand, really, and then I'll just go along here and. 
fold it down. Here it gets a little tricky. I'll start to get these bubbles that want, and if you just roll your hand over those, they're gonna create those little runs, little lines that's ugly as hell. So, down at the bottom, it'll start out fine. You'll see, like right there, you got that little line there. I like to just pop it out. And just run those air bubbles out. See, it doesn't take much. Quick second. Besides, so give me hassle though. Let's take this finicky. These lines, you know, you're always going to get those, especially around the curves. So I don't put too much in emphasis into that. I like to go along here and kind of pinch and just, just like at the top earlier, and just roll your finger across it. So your blade, to make sure things land. That's good to go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of gold and we're gonna go along the back side here, uh, just so you can distinguish between the blade and uh, non-striking surface. Take one or two pieces depending on how far away the tape is from each other. Usually only takes one, but surprises happen. Okay. Oh, tape. Okay. Here with that end of the blade on the back. Oh, we have to do two pieces, which is fine. Make sure the tape on the back will be a little bit stronger. Ah, oh, this is damn pain. Sorry, guys. Give me a second. So, let's get the second piece on there, and we'll probably do uh, a little gold around the bottom and stuff too, so I'm not going to do a, a cross guard or any kind of hand guard or anything on this one. Let's try and get this about as even as possible.
sure you spelled out. Alright. Go ahead and take a couple strips. Now, some of you might be like, well, why did you do the gray down here if you're just going to add more tape? No, to be honest, I changed it on the fly. But it's always good because it'll help hold it just a little bit better. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if you're uh, seriously on a budget or whatnot, then you can take a little bit more care and plan your things out more accordingly. But I think uh, it's not such, not such a bad thing. Now this is Duck Brand. They do uh, a lot of good metallic colors. I like using them for this gold. Um, the the chrome that they do will flake, but the, this gold doesn't, which is awesome. I mean, when the, the chrome one flakes, it just looks tacky. It starts being like a dull light gray. It's really weird. Um, but this gold, it's not like that at all. So it keeps its color. Um, but one thing about duck is, is it tends to be a thicker mill on the back end. Um, so when you're doing a lot of your folds and stuff, that's something you're going to have to take into account because it's going to um, tend to bunch up or get these creases in it a lot easier um, than say like IPG or even 3M. So if you're try trying to hide like creases or you don't want the lines there, then you probably don't want to use duck brand in that part of your weapon. but it does look really good. Their colors are really great too. Uh, some of their tape you can kind of see through though. That's why I like the IPG because it tends to be a little bit, uh, the color holds, especially on like the foam shields and stuff that we make out of the polyethylene. Um, when you, if you don't tape the back side right, then the, you can see right through the duck brand tapes. It's kind of weird. So I hope everyone's been having uh, fun in quarantine. Sarcasm. Hopefully we'll be able to get out and start fighting soon. I think I have said that just about every two weeks. But I would rather miss a season or two, or you know, a couple months out of the season hopefully than uh, someone I know at the field, so. Um, but hopefully by uh, stage two, we can get some small groups together. You guys can just group up and start practicing, knock the dust, dust off. And then stage three, we'll fire back up. Hopefully that's coming sooner than later. They're already in stage 1.5 or something. Alright, so enough of that. We all see the gym glue every day. I'm gonna get a pommel ready and attach that and then uh, finish up the handle. I mean, you've seen that in other videos. So um, I'm just gonna throw it on real quick and then I'll show you the finished product. Alright, so <clears throat> a couple of things. With our, uh, with our organization, KBA, um, when it comes to single-edge weapons, um, just to make sure, especially newbie fighters, uh, you know, it's not an insult, just people who are new. Um, so single-edge, you know, you only got the one side strike the surface, and the other side, you know, I've seen people turn them around, they're swinging them this way, okay? Hitting with the uh, non-striking edge. So what we require on all single-edge weapons to make sure that they're not being swung the wrong way and everyone can kind of feel it, is what we call a trigger. What we do is we'll just take some tape, a piece of rope, um, 
you know, whatever you want to use to make a bulk, like it feel more bulky on the front. That way it rests in this area of your hand along your fingers. It makes it uncomfortable to hold it backwards. Uncomfortable. Wow. I stumble over my words. Um, and what I like to do is I'll take some you know, loose tape that I have on the projects near finish. Kind of do stuff like this. And if I need to, I'll take some more tape. Of course, rope would be re really good. I just don't have any handy right now. So what I like to do is I just take a piece of tape and I fold it backwards, kind of like earlier, you know, to, to make the double-sided tape. Again, this doesn't have to be super pretty. I'll just do this a couple times to create something like that. Kind of push it down good. Because once you get the tape on there, it's going to hug it in kind of tight, you know. So something like that. And then, you know, just go around it. With your electrical tape, or if you want to use just plain duct tape, it's fine. So you can kind of, I don't know if you can really see it or not, but you can, there's a little bit of a bulge that rests right there on those fingers. Make sure that you're holding that blade face and forward so you're always hitting with the striking surface. There, you have a sword. One other point. Um, if you're making a double-sided sword, you know, double-edged blade, just keep this and, and go see my spear video. I, I cover using two sides of foam. Instead of trying to cut, you know, a half sheet or a half strip that goes all the way around like this, then down the back, I actually just cut a single piece that's the same length it will go over, and then I cut that piece in half, and then just taped the tips together so that you can put it on. Uh, that's much easier than trying to, I used to cut a half strip the whole length, but then I would end up with a bunch of unused padding or padding that I would just end up wasting big pieces of it. So that's a really uh, good thing is go check out the spear video, watch that to get tips on how to do double sided um, striking surface with an edge. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to toss that in there real quick. All right.